All right, hello everyone. Miner Biker here. Obviously, right now I am not in biking mode. I'm in mining mode, but I do happen to have a GMBN sticker and a Miner Biker sticker on my hard hat, representing the fact that I always have bikes on the brain even when I'm here. So, I've had a lot of questions on Instagram and on YouTube commenting about my LaSalle Peak and what I think about it and if I'm going to do a long review on it and asking questions about it and so on. So that's what we're here to do today. So I have had my Fizari LaSalle Peak for just over three months now and have put about 400 miles on on a variety of rides. And let's take a quick look at how it's performed and what I'm thinking about it so far. So first, a little bit of perspective. In the past, I've had a couple of different Rocky Mountain bikes. I've had a transition bike. I've had an Evil. I've had a Santa Cruz, all with a variety of travel and different wheel sizes. And I've also ridden quite a few other bikes that I didn't actually own, but I've demoed and ridden other people's bikes, including the Ibis Ritmo. I have demoed that. And that is a bike that a lot of people are wanting to compare with the Fazari LaSalle Peak. And so I, I do have some perspective there. My LaSalle Peak is a size large. I'm 5'10". I'm running the Rock Chocks Lyric RC2 and the Super Deluxe Suspension. Um, just for reference, I always run flat pedals. Uh, you can check out my video that I did earlier on doing a bike check, checking out all the components I'm running on that bike. So check out that video as well. I'll link that. Also keep in mind, I'm not a quote unquote professional rider. So what you're getting here are just some honest thoughts and perspectives from a basically normal guy. So let's get into what I'm thinking about this bike so far. So first of all, let's talk about descending. In short, it's a, it's my favorite bike I've ever ridden as far as descending pretty much any kind of descent. And it's a long travel 29er. It does what long travel 29ers do, which goes blisteringly fast and it smashes over everything, rolls over everything very smooth, very efficiently. And it, it likes to go really, really fast downhill. The suspension flat platform is really plush off the top, but it ramps up good to take the big hits. I really like it. It doesn't really have quite the mini downhill bike feel like some long travel 29ers do, say like the Evil Reckoning or something like that, that just absolutely flatten everything out. But it is more plush, and I personally like it better descending than something like the Ritmo with its suspension platform. I think it's a I think Fazari gets a good blend of downhill characteristics since it is smooth and planted, but it still lets you fill the trail. The LaSalle definitely is every bit the enduro race bike it was designed to be, and it can and will rip any downhill you point it at, and it'll be playful, agile, and stable and confidence inspiring while you're doing it. It is absolutely awesome. So now let's talk about perhaps the biggest question slash claim that this bike brings to the table, and that is its climbing ability. As everyone knows, most long travel slack bikes are at best tolerable on the uphills. Lately, there's been some new geometry trends to address this, and Fazari is right at the front of the pack with this. So the LaSalle Peak has a whopping 78 degree effective seat tube angle and has an efficient suspension platform and thanks to that honestly it climbs better than any full suspension bike I've ever ridden the the seat angle is so steep it naturally gets your weight a little farther forward so you're right centered over the bottom bracket and as far as pedal bobs concerned Fazari's Tetralake suspension it may not be quite as rigid quite the rigid bobless platform you get on something like a DW link from IBIS or Living Link from Spot or some of these other ones like that. But as far as a four bar suspension system goes, it is extremely good and efficient with minimal pedal bob. And I'd say it climbs just as well, if not better than the Ritmo, which is really saying something. And I like it better on the descent. So overall, I would take it. Uphill maneuverability is pretty darn good for a long slack bike. The short offset fork helps that. And whether it's steady spinning or techie climbing, honestly, the LaSalle will blow you away. 
with its climbing ability, especially when you consider what kind of a bike it is with 160 front, 150 rear travel, it's long, it's slack, it's designed to be a race bike downhill and yet it can it can climb right up there with the very best of them of much shorter travel bikes so along with its climbing ability let's talk just a little bit about pedaling in general on the LaSalle when you first get on it get on the LaSalle peak and just pedal it around on flat ground in a parking lot of the bike shop or something it feels a lot shorter than most bikes because that super steep seat tube angle makes your virtual top tube a little bit shorter which is the distance from the center of your saddle up to your stem and so that that's shorter thanks to the seat tube angle being so steep but for me once I got used to that different fit I actually found it to be super comfortable I've ridden this bike on some crazy long rides rides that Fazari may or may not have had in mind when when they built this bike and I spent a lot of time just sitting and spinning the pedals like for example, this video, is, this is a 32 mile ride in the upper last chance area of the San Rafael Desert. And it was a lot of just of spinning, of just exploring around, just pedaling, cruising. And this bike performs incredibly well for what it is. Obviously, if all you're doing is XC riding, this is not the bike you want. But if you're like me and you, you ride everything from cross country type stuff, to regular single track, to enduro aggressive trails, to downhill at bike parks, the LaSalle is an incredible option that can do everything and do it well. So some of my very favorite type of riding is stuff like you'd find in Moab or St. George Hurricane or Sedona, etc. Lots of tech, drops, jumps, tight maneuvers. Obviously the LaSalle is a long wheelbase bike. And it can't twist and turn as sharply as some shorter bikes with smaller wheels. That said, it is the best bike I've ever ridden when it comes to tech. And definitely the funnest bike. It can smash through anything. It can take the big hits. It pops up and down stuff like a champ. It loves to get airborne. And for what it is, for how long it is, it actually maneuvered really well. Considering it has a wheelbase over 1,200 millimeters. The fact that Fazari was able to keep the chain stays down to only 435 millimeters, which is actually very short for a 29er, helps a lot, especially when it comes to wheaties, manuals, things like that. Something I really like about the LaSalle that suits my varied riding well is its ability to run either 29 inch or 27.5 plus wheels. I do have both wheel sets. Each one has its own cassette and brake rotor, so it makes it really easy to swap things back and forth. Just a matter of a couple minutes and you're set up to go. And I do swap them out pretty frequently depending on where I'm going riding at the time. Personally, I love the 29ers for most everything, from techie riding to downhill, general trails, things like that. But when I go on my more adventure rides out in the middle of nowhere, and I don't know for sure what kind of condition the roads and trails or whatever, wherever I'm going are going to be, and I really like being able to put on the plus tires since they're better at handling, say, loose dirt, sand, mud, and just a random huge mix of conditions that I'll come across while I'm way out in the wilderness. And sometimes it's fun to just be able to swap to the different wheel size just to make the bike feel different for a little while. It's like having two bikes in one. The LaSalle does have a flip chip at the base of the rear shock with a high and low setting. And those settings are designed to correspond to the 27.5 plus and the 29 respectively since the plus tires are just a little bit smaller in diameter however personally i've ended up just leaving the chip in the high position where it works for the plus wheels and provides a bit more bottom bracket height and pedal clearance when riding techie stuff on the 29ers that said i may end up going back to the low setting in the summer when i'm riding more downhill stuff but we'll see so in short I have more fun on the LaSalle Peak than I've had on any other bike I've ever ridden and really that's what it's all about, right? Even with the huge variety of riding I do on it, the only other bike I currently feel the need to have is a fat bike because honestly the LaSalle can do everything I want to do on it, which is a lot, except for snow riding. And that, I have tried it with the plus tires on and it worked good while it was when it was hard packed and as soon as I got off the hard packed snow yet, it, Obviously, it didn't work too well. So I do have a fat bike to go along with it. The quality of the LaSalle and of Fazari in general is right up there with the best. The spec is absolutely amazing for the price. 
the geometry is fantastic and to have a, a great company like Fazari customize it however you want and then they set the fit and the sizing everything just individually for you is a huge bonus these days honestly it's hard to go wrong with any new modern bike but for me the LaSalle has definitely been the right choice once the mud and the snow of the winter are gone there's a lot of high mountain riding waiting for me in the LaSalle this year as well as some more enduro races and I'm even going to try some bike packing with this thing and see how it does with that I am stoked to keep getting wowed by what this bike can do so if you have any more questions or want more info please comment below either here on YouTube or or on my Instagram account uh, check out my Instagram if you haven't already to see lots of pictures and, and video clips of this bike out doing its thing Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You'll get to see lots of videos of this bike out doing what it does. So thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for the support. I hope you enjoy it. Again, if you have any comments or questions or want more information, please don't hesitate to contact me in the comments below. Thanks for watching.